As a society, we are continuously finding new breakthroughs and ideas, whether that is repurposing existing inventions or being on the forefront of cutting-edge technology. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be taking a look at three recent announcements and discoveries taking place around the globe. Former Chernobyl engineer reveals he witnessed a major nuclear leak at the plant four years before the 1986 disaster. An engineer who was previously employed at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant has recently revealed that he bore witness to a major accident four years prior to the disaster that occurred in 1986. Nikolai Steinberg was one of the Ukrainian engineers who built the plant near the Soviet city of Pripyat as well as served as the head of turbines in the summer of 1982, when, according to him, a serious incident took place. Nikolai appeared on the UK's Channel 5 documentary series called The Chernobyl Disaster, in which he said he witnessed steam coming out of a pipe outside of his office during what was meant to be a routine exercise that was a part of a major nuclear leak at Reactor 1 of the plants. However, he alleged that officials at Chernobyl never addressed the situation. In fact, Nikolai alleged officials tried to bury the incident. The former Chernobyl engineer further explained how he became a witness to this incident. He says he was in his office at the time of the routine exercise, but there was an announcement regarding an accident at the second unit, at which point he left his office, and that is when he saw steam coming out of the ventilation pipe just outside his office. The steam was actually a sign of a major nuclear leak. Reactor 1 was then shut down, and Nikolai told his team to wait, having thought the officials would brief the workers on the incident that had just taken place. He continued to explain that he told his team they were not going home but instead were having an emergency meeting. However, that meeting never occurred, and by 1am the employees went home. According to Nikolai, the KGB the USSR's secret police, which was constantly present, quickly covered up the accident. He says that is how things worked, and even though he knew, there was no information about why it happened. The engineer divulges that the employees were never officially informed, and there were no reports made. Historian Dr. Natalia Chernyshova said the KGB would have had two priorities after the 1982 incident, which would have been to investigate whether that was an act of sabotage or whether somebody was being negligent, as well as contain any rumors that might have been going around in order to prevent possible panic. Natalia notes that when she looked into records on Chernobyl dating back to 1983, which were only declassified in 2017, she discovered the presence of distorted rumors spread by a resident of Pripyat. She adds that none of this information was made available to the press, as this was the kind of situation that the Soviet Union dreaded. The same report reveals that in the space of January 1978 to December 1982, the station experienced 27 accidents and 87 equipment failures. Five of these accidents and 16 failures were in the 12 months of 1982. Following the reactor malfunction seen by Nikolai, radiation spread over a nine-mile radius around the station. Unfortunately, the residents of Pripyat were never notified. Hiker rescued after a man on Twitter located him from a photo of his feet. René Compine was a 46-year-old who embarked on a hike through the mountains in Southern California. He was in contact with his friends, even sending them a picture of his feet dangling off a ledge, but after several hours passed with no further communication from Compine, his friends reported him missing to the police and search teams were dispatched. Unfortunately, the police did not have much to go on as they began the search. Compine's friends were not sure exactly which trail or region he was hiking in, and it appeared that his phone was out of charge as texts and calls were not going through. He had also disabled the location services on his phone, so officials were not able to track his last known location from the texts that he had sent. All that they had to base their search off was the low-resolution photo that he had sent his friends, containing only his legs and some rocks, with no defining features or landmarks whatsoever. As lead after lead ran out and the search parties yielded nothing, police took to Twitter to ask for assistance. 
They posted the somewhat grainy photo with the caption, Are you an avid hiker in the Mount Waterman area? Search and rescue teams need help locating a missing hiker. He sent this picture to a friend. His car was found near Buckhorn Campground Trailhead. Call us if you recognize the area pictured below. They posted the picture in the hope that someone who trekked the area regularly would be familiar enough with the landscape to be able to identify the region from the small amount included in the photo. However, they ended up being helped by someone who had never been on the trail before in his life. Benjamin Kuo, or A16YR as he is known on Twitter, is a ham radio operator who instantly began working on determining the location of Compine's photo. I've got a very weird hobby, which is, I love taking a look at photos and figuring out where they're taken. He began combing through satellite footage and 3D terrain maps of the area, searching for formations that matched up with those that were in the background of the photo. Amazingly, he was able to narrow it down to very specific coordinates, which was where he believed Compine was when he took the photo. He posted these results to Twitter and contacted the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department who then began narrowing their search according to Kuo's findings. The search and rescue team flew helicopters at low altitudes through the area, which was covered with a dense fog, and finally found Compine, who was unharmed and airlifted to safety. Although he suffered no injuries, Compine was desperate to be found at the time of his rescue, telling Kuo, I crazy appreciate what you did. I really don't know if I could make it there another day. It was just so cold. He had taken a wrong turn and ended up lost due to recent wildfires in the area that had burned down some of the signs indicating the path of the trail. Kuo's amazing job finding the location of the photo could have very well saved Compine's life, as police and search parties had no idea where in the vast and dense California hiking area he had gone missing in, and it could have taken weeks to eventually find him. There is no doubt that he owes his rescue to Kuo's strange hobby and his knowledge and use of available technology. Rico Harris Rico Harris was destined for the NBA. He was supposed to have his name in lights alongside the likes of Lamar Adom and Magic Johnson. He moved from Los Angeles, California to Seattle, Washington in order to start a life and a family with his long-term girlfriend. Instead, he vanished without a trace. Rico Harris was born and raised in Los Angeles, California in 1977. He grew up with a talent for basketball and had the height to show for it. Standing at 6 feet 9 inches, Harris was destined for the life of a pro athlete. After attending a community college in the Los Angeles area, he continued his athletic career at California State Northridge, which had a newly formed yet perpetually losing Division I basketball team. The coaches there hoped that Harris would turn their losing streak around and propel them to the top of the college basketball brackets. His career there was short-lived, however, as he suffered from multiple injuries and was frequently disciplined by the coaching staff for his hard partying ways. After college, Harris was asked to join the Harlem Globetrotters due to his immense skill with sinking three-point shots from seemingly impossible distances. He prospered for a while but was again sidelined due to injury and was forced to end his once illustrious basketball career for good. The end of an era led to an increase in personal problems for Rico. He suffered from alcohol and substance abuse and efforts made by his family to get him clean were of no use. At one point, he was seen begging on the streets for money to buy his next fix. One final attempt made by his family to get him sober resulted in him successfully completing a rehab stint in Los Angeles. When he finished the program, he met and fell in love with Jennifer Song, a visiting insurance broker who lived in Seattle. His life seemed to be getting back on track at long last and they made plans to move in together and start a family in Seattle. But the happy ending never came. Rico Harris decided to make one last trip to his mother's house in Alhambra, just outside of Los Angeles, before driving up to Seattle the next day. Apparently, he and his mother had a disagreement of some sort, and Harris ended up leaving for Seattle in the late hours of October 9th, 2014. Heading north on Interstate 5, Harris was last seen at 10.45am 
on October 10th at a gas station just outside of Sacramento, California. He had previously told his girlfriend, Jennifer, that he was going to rest in the mountains, despite having a job interview in Seattle scheduled for that same day. He was never heard from again. Several days after his disappearance, investigators found his black Nissan Maxima parked in the lot of a country park in Yolo County, California. Harris's credit cards were inside the vehicle, none of which had any charges made after his disappearance. His backpack was later found on the banks of a nearby creek. It contained his phone and phone charger. Investigators looked through the contents of his phone and found videos and selfies that Harris had taken the night of his disappearance, but they all showed Harris displaying happy, unconcerning behavior, like singing along to some songs and remarking on the beauty of the scenery around him. A full-scale investigation was launched, with area police using cadaver dogs and aircraft outfitted with thermographic cameras to scan the heavily forested terrain. Apart from his car and backpack, there was no evidence of Harris anywhere. Investigators were baffled. How could a man so large, 6'9 and nearly 300 pounds, disappear without a trace and without a motive? It's been nearly seven years since Rico Harris seemingly vanished into thin air, and there has been no trace of him since. But what do you make of these discoveries and announcements? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.